Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by someone you need to know. She's worked with teens and young adults, assisting families in crisis, founder of allkindsoftherapy.com, Jenny Wilder. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Let's go beyond the mic. A recent survey found 45% of adults said the pandemic has affected their mental health. Mm. My son was supposed to have the pomp and circumstances of a senior year. That disappeared. Will there be any long-term damage from the pandemic on this class of 2020? I think that there's going to be long-term ramifications for all of this, not just for the class of 2020, but for an entire generation of kids. We're not going to know. History will help us and all these longitudinal studies that I know have started. But yeah, it's, it's they're missing rites of passage, and it's painful. My stepdaughter, you know, no problem, bizarre version of graduation in early June, like, you know, social distancing, because the state she lives in is more open than other states. and it's bizarre. Yeah, there will be, but we don't know exactly how this will play out. My son graduated virtually. With so much time recently with at-home education, what are the best ways for young people to manage the stress and anxiety they're facing now? Yeah, I think I think that's a, such a great question because I think that it starts, of course, unfortunately, everything falls back on the parents right now. And parents are stressed, as you mentioned, that that 45% of adults are struggling. So kiddos pick up on the energy from their parents. And so creating structure where there isn't much, and kiddos who have been struggling in school before the pandemic are now definitely struggling a lot more during the pandemic. And so, you know, creating a structure, whether that looks like a weekly schedule, a daily schedule, I know in my own home, I have a little person, I'm a single parent. And we have a schedule of, you know, what happens that day. And it changes early and often even in that day because mom's working. Mom's on the phone right now. Mom's on Zoom calls. Mom's trying to teach kindergarten, by the way, failing miserably at it. So where their school, try to create something. And then celebrate the successes that are happening. And then try and keep a routine around sleep. You know, try and get up and have breakfast. <laughs> The food, step aside from the cell phone and the iPads and the this and the that and the smart speaker and whatever, and kind of pull ourselves away. It's a crazy time, and I think just everyone honoring the fact that mental health is, is tough. It's strained on everyone right now, and it's Mental Health Awareness Month. I wish it was Mental Health Awareness Year. As schools return this fall, the return to normalcy should help students get back in their established patterns and routines. Yeah. Are you afraid that once schools return back to normal, we might have shutdowns again and thus more imbalancing with church these kids? You know, I read this morning that Cal State has just announced that they're going virtual in the fall. So I think, you know, each, you know, depending on your region, your area, the level of the pandemic in it, yes, it, it's very possible that that will happen. And the idea of going through another quarantine with my child, as I'm sure most parents are feeling, is exhausting to think about. And it's going to have ripple effects. And I think understanding the facts about mental health and understanding that there isn't a beginning, middle, and always a clear-cut end for struggles with mental health and mental illness is kind of the first step in all this. It's like recognizing that maybe a child looks okay today, but maybe tomorrow or next week they might not be. And not being afraid to talk about that and seek help, whether it's from a school or pastor or from the web. I mean, that's why I created all kinds of therapy.com. So there's a safe place for families to land to find out information whenever they're ready. But there's teletherapy now. So there are clinicians who who are licensed in states that previously couldn't get licensing in easily, and they're more readily available. How has this adversity affect the education of our children? Yeah. It's going to be an interesting one, right? New York City Public Schools has over a million kiddos, and some, you know, the full range of kids. I think every kid in America who's in you know, elementary, middle, and high school is going to be behind next year. So that's kind of the good news for parents and the bad news. So what does that look like? You know, the the class of 2020 is going to be the pandemic year. 
oh, you're the ones who never had a real graduation or a prom or whatever. But the long-term effects of what this is going to look like, it's hard to say, but it is going to have ripple effects. So everyone's kind of behind and recognizing that we're, that all of these students are behind. That's going to be, unfortunately, fall on the school as time passes. If it's possible, how can adults help our children manage their stress and anxiety? Listening. Not fixing, listening, hearing. Why is listening so important? When a child feels heard, they feel empowered. And when in a time of no control, we all need to find control. Time's running out, so it's time for the Rocky Nate. Eight random questions. Answer okay. with the first thing that comes to your mind. No pressure. <laughs> Favorite way to de-stress after a long day? General hospital. <laughs> What's your creative outlet? Uh, writing. Favorite guilty pleasure? Uh, general hospital. Are you a dog person or a cat person? My dog's laying next to me. <laughs> Last book you read that wasn't work-related. Oh, boy. I don't have any right now. Well, I, you know what? My daughter and I are reading Harry Potter right now. What's your lucky number? 13. Best place to vacation? Maine. And your favorite stuffed animal growing up? Uh, I had a blanket. That was my thing. Where can people find you? Come visit allkindsoftherapy.com. And if there are any questions, feel free to reach out through the website and we'll answer questions. She loves General Hospital. She is a dog person and she likes to vacation in Maine. All kinds of therapy.com's Jenny Wilder. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you so much for having me. And that, my friends, is Beyond the Mic. 